So if you've seen my previous video before about the Mi Router 3, uh, then you kind of know where this is going. If you haven't watched that video, by the way, you can always check it out here in the top right corner. Or was it left? Oh wait, no. Your left, my right. I don't know, I, I, I think it's somewhere around here, okay? <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, the thing about that video was that it talked about getting Padavan onto the Mi Router 3, which although is a really good router, has its limitations of notably being that it only has a 100 megabit ethernet port, and that in itself has its own limitations. Uh, for example, here where I so for example, here where I am in Malaysia, my internet speed is actually 800 megabits per second. And this router severely bottlenecks that connection down to just 100 megabits. Now, this is where the Mi Router 3G, which I obviously have here with me today, comes into play as it is a slightly more updated version of the uh, previous Mi Router 3, except for this time it has a gigabit ethernet Port. And again, I decided to make this follow-up video because the process of getting Padavan into it wasn't exactly similar to what it was in the previous videos. And because of the lack of documentation of this process online, or at least in English, I felt that it warranted its own video. So yeah, here it is. How to install Padavan into your Mi Router uh, 3G. Well, it's kind of in Chinese here, but yeah, it says Mi Router 3G. I don't read Chinese, but yeah. <laughs> now this process is different in the sense that this time around we have to once again install the developer firmware onto the router, but not because it gives us instant SSH access, but because we need to request for this access. We do this of course by first visiting miwifi.com, head into the downloads page which is this link right here, scroll all the way down until you see ROM for our 3 g and download the developer firmware which is uh, this link on the right. After that's done, log into your router by going into 192.168.31.1. My default password for this video is just 1122. 3344 and of course it goes without saying that your computer has to be connected to the router to do this. So yeah, once you've logged in, over on the top right drop down click on the second link and that should bring you directly into the management page of the router. Click on the grey box when the pop-up appears and select file and select the developer firmware that you downloaded. In my case I'm using version 2.25.122. If you get this screen then it's asking if you want to reset the router and you can just select yes and wait for it to completely flash the new firmware and reset itself. If you didn't get this option however, no worries, just head back into the router management page once again and look for this button. This will help you to manually reset your router and when you click on it and the pop-up appears, click on the right button. The left one is just asking if you want to back up your existing settings and we don't really want to do that. We just want to reset the router and so we just click the right button to do just that. This next step assumes that you already have a Wi-Fi network with an internet connection running and unfortunately, as far as I know, there's no real way to do this without an active internet connection. Once you see the start screen, press the bottom right button, press the blue button to agree to the terms and conditions etc and click on the second option in this screen. This is telling your Mi router to set itself up as a relay access point to your existing Wi-Fi network. We do this just to get the router online so that you can register it under your Xiaomi account that will enable you to get the SSH root access username and password. Over under next page, it should automatically scan your SSID and present you with the strongest SSID. In this case, it got mine correctly, but sometimes it might be wrong. So just make sure that the correct SSID is selected and enter its password. This next page just lets us know what the newly broadcasted SSID is for this router and the password for it, which should be the same as the original password. Alright, so then this next bit just asks if the router is a home router or an office router or whatever. So I'm just going to leave it at home and enter an administrator password for the router to which I'm going to be using an extremely secure 
3344. Uh, just for the purposes of this video, of course. Press the blue button to continue and wait for a bit. It should show you the new internal IP address of this router and just keep that in mind as it may be useful for later. Now this next bit doesn't necessarily have to be done using a phone, in fact it can be done using an app for the PC but I find it easier to do on the phone just maybe for the plain reason that the PC app is in Chinese whereas you can get the Android app in English. If you haven't already got it, go into the Google Play Store and search for Mi Wi-Fi. It should come up as the first result and install it and of course, launch it. Once it's launched, just allow all permissions for now and sign in. If you don't have a Mi account already, then of course, create a new account. If you're like me and have a Mi account, then just sign into your existing account and once you're signed in, tap on the top left corner. Here you can see that I've got a router set up already but I'm going to add a new router by tapping on the add router button and it will search for a Mi router in my vicinity. This is where it was important for us to set up the router as a relay to the original router as it not only allows us to detect the router on our existing Wi-Fi network but to also have access to the internet while doing so. Once the router is detected, just tap on pair router and when prompted the admin password, just key in whatever we entered earlier which was 11223344. Hit OK and if all goes well then that's pretty much it on the mobile side of things so now we can move back to the PC. Alright, so now that we have the Mi router binded to our Mi account, we're going to need the SSH username and password as well as a file to flash that will grant us SSH access into the router itself. To do so, open up a browser and type in https colon forward slash forward slash d.mewifi.com forward slash rom forward slash ssh and hit enter. Sign in with your Mi account and if the next page doesn't load at all, then that's perfectly normal actually. Just let it time out and when it does, take a look at the address bar for your browser and it should look something like this. Edit it so that you're adding a https colon forward slash forward slash in front of it and it should instantly bring you to the page that you are looking for. This is probably some error on the Xiaomi website but regardless, it's a pretty easy fix. Uh, just one that might not be apparent for people who don't know how to. Now that we are on this page, take note of the username in this case root and password which in this case is F7E32810. Yours will of course be probably different. Once you're done taking note of those, click on the button on the right which will allow us to download a file that we can flash onto the router which grants us SSH access into it. When the pop-up box appears, click the button on the right and once again, it might fail and it might time out like it did in this instance. But all we need to do is just to edit the URL in the address bar once again and add in HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash and once you hit enter, it should load perfectly fine. And the file, of course, should download normally. Copy the 5 kilobyte file that we downloaded into a spare USB stick that was formatted in FAT32. We will need this for later. So this is the part where it should draw some similarities to the video that I did before. If you've watched that video and know exactly how to set up a virtualized Linux environment, then you can skip this entire section. But for those of you who do not know, we're going to need to download Linux Mint and VirtualBox. This is because we need a Linux environment to compound this new firmware that we are going to be using on the router as there are no readily available links to actually download these online. We're going to be using my light Linux distro of choice, Linux Mint, so we'll type in Linux Mint into the search bar, hit enter, click on download. We're going to be using the 64-bit cinnamon version and of course choose a location that is closest to you. Next step, we're going to need a software that will help us run this Linux distro in a virtualized environment in Windows. So we're going to download VirtualBox by typing in VirtualBox into the address bar, hit enter, click on download and click on the Windows host. Once all files have been downloaded and you have installed VirtualBox, launch it. 
click on new, enter a name for your operating system. In this case, I'm just going to be calling it Linux Mint. I've got plenty of RAM, so I'm just going to allocate it for gigabytes. Create a virtual hard disk, click next to VDI and dynamically allocate it. And I'm just going to set my disk size to about 20 gigabytes. Before we launch it, head into settings, go into system under processor and set it to maybe have more than just one core. This of course should help out with our compile times later. I'm on an AMD Ryzen system and I found that under acceleration, setting it to none under para virtualization fixes some problems so I am going to do just that. Go into storage and under controller IDE, click on add an optical drive and choose disk. We then choose the Linux Mint ISO that we downloaded earlier. Head into network and so that our operating system gets its own IP address under our main router, I'm going to change this to a bridged adapter. Now start up the Linux distro, interrupt the automatic booting and select OEM install. I don't really need a name for this operating system, so I'm just going to hit continue, continue to English, I'm going to tick third party software, yes to erase the disk and install Linux Mint, and continue hitting continue. Uh, this bit is not really necessary, but I'm just going to set my time zone for fun, and as far as the password goes, I'm going to use a very secure 1234, uh, just of course for the purposes of this video. Give it some time to finish installing and restart when it's done. Here's where things differ slightly again from the previous video. What I found is that if I use the same steps as what I documented before, during the build firmware stage of things, it would always fail. But luckily, of course, I found a fix for it. Open up the terminal and type in the command as usual, which is wget space dash o space start dot sh space http colon forward slash forward slash prometheus dot Freezer, freezy, freezer, and <laughs> some, some freeze, freeze something. Okay, freeze dot net uh, forward slash script forward slash start dash. Uh, remember how we always typed ninety nine dot sh? Well, this time it's going to be a little bit different. We're going to type in hundred dot sh instead. Now this actually downloads the beta versions of the scripts, which has its own updated sources. I'll talk about this in just a bit. Type in chmod space plus x space start dot sh to make it executable and of course run it by using dot period. Yeah, you know, that dot forward slash start dot sh. When asked to select a repository, it may look like we actually have two options here, but it's really only just one, which is perfectly fine for us anyway, so we're just going to hit one. We're going to hit any key to continue to understand that yes, of course, this is beta and stuff and for some reason it will ask us this again and so we hit one again and we hit any key to continue again. Give it a little more time and it will ask you which router you would like to configure this for, which the answer is actually super simple. We hit two for Xiaomi and over on this page we choose number seven for me r 3 g I'm not too sure what number 6 is with the underscore SPI, but I found that 7 works just fine, so we're going to use just that. Once that's all loaded up, this page should look extremely familiar. We're going to build the toolchain first and foremost, so press 3. Let's fast forward this just a little and talk about this move. Now, my Russian obviously isn't all that good on the count that I don't speak any Russian at all. But the reason why things have changed as I understand it at least is because the developers were having difficulty updating both Padavan and Linaro at the same time. It was pretty easy and manageable in the beginning, but where things are right now it was starting to get a bit troublesome and so they decided to merge the sources together. Now obviously this is still in the beta phase of things, but because of this move they have actually stopped working on the stable scripts to the point where the stable scripts are actually non-working. The beta scripts though are fully working and the firmware builds perfectly fine which is exactly why we are using it right now. Two chain building is done and so we just press the any key to continue. If I can find it, ah yes, there it is. We're going to now build the firmware so hit 4. I'm going to put a skin on it so press 2 and I like the dark grey theme vector so I'm just going to hit 2 again and enable it. 
Press Q to quit this menu and now we're going to have to do a little bit more waiting again as building the firmware takes time. Press 3 to start it. If all goes well then it should build perfectly fine which is exactly what we want to see so that's awesome. Press any key to continue. So now that firmware building is done we're going to have to enable SSH access into the router itself. To do so, unplug your router from the power source and remember the USB stick that we prepared earlier? Well, take it and plug it into the back of the router and using a small pin, here I'm using a SIM eject pin to press onto the reset button of the router. Keep this pin pressed onto the reset button then using the other hand, power the router back on. When the front light of the router starts blinking then you can let go of the pin and after about 3-5 to five seconds it should be done flashing. Once the router is done booting up normally, head back into the main menu and this time we're going to hit S to go into script settings. We're going to change the SSH settings so press 5 and you can see here that I've already set up my SSH login and whatnot but for the purposes of showing it to you guys, I'm going to demonstrate how it's done. Press 2 to update the parameters and for the IP address of the router, remember what we saw earlier which was 192.168.1.106 in my case, the router's login which as we saw earlier, root and the password which again as we saw earlier in my case at least was F7E32810. Hit enter and if all goes well it should say that SSH access is granted, so that's all good. Press Q multiple times to head back into the main menu and now we can actually get to flashing the firmware by pressing 4. Press 4 again to flash a firmware, I'm going to just select no to back up all partitions because I like living dangerously and it will come up with an error saying that an identification error occurred, please validate the following data in which I just select yes to flash it anyway. It shouldn't take long but once it's done take note of the default login and password and of course if you need it, the Wi-Fi network SSID and the Wi-Fi default password. Enter Y to reboot into the router and if you've made it this far then that's pretty much it. To test if the router has been flashed successfully, open up your browser and type in the default gateway which is 192.168.1.1 and key in the default username and password that we saw earlier which was admin and admin. You should now see Padavan booted up in all of its glory and rejoice. You've made it this far and you've got yourself a router running the awesome Padavan. If you'd like to see how to set up this router for Malaysia's Unify or Maxis or anything that uses VLAN tagging, you can always check out my previous video in which I covered this topic before and if you would like to maybe revert it back to stock firmware, well, you could also refer back to that previous video as the steps are pretty much identical. For now though, I decided to configure the router to my ISP settings and do a speed test to see if I was no longer bottlenecked and ooh, voila. It's good to be running at full speed. <laughs> so I really love doing super technical stuff like this by the way as I feel like not only am I doing something super cool but I'm also learning a lot along the way. Like this router, it cost me like 23 US dollars which is 97 ringgit by the way. And it is super cool to take something, hack it, and make it into so much more than what it originally was, or at least what it was planned to be. Anyway, I hope you guys liked this kind of educational content, and if you did, give it a like and maybe share it around. It really helps me a lot into continuing to make content like this. Subscribe to my channel, stay notified and maybe leave a comment on questions or things that you'd maybe like to see me check out. My name is Yang aka The Tech Rodent and I will see you guys around.